Um, I think it's been a great day today. Lots of good conversation. I think a lot of back and forth. Uh, getting different perspectives on different things has really added to the conversation here. And I think tonight we're going to have an opportunity to even bring it up another level on the conversation about what is it we're all trying to accomplish and how we're trying to accomplish it. We're delighted to have Tom Steyer here tonight. And Tom, I truly appreciate you taking the time to come over and join us. Tom Steyer is certainly well known in California, I think increasingly across the region and certainly at the national level as well. But he's the founder of the San Francisco-based Next Gen Climate Organization and clearly an advocate for greenhouse gas reductions and climate missions. Tom believes we have a moral responsibility to give back and ensure every person, all of our kids and grandkids, have an economic opportunity, but also the planet that they deserve and the environment that they can all live in and that can sustain them just like we've enjoyed. And that mission, Tom has put his heart and soul in, and I've had the opportunity to have several conversations with him. I know this is from the inside out. Tom, we're delighted to have you here tonight, and we truly appreciate you taking the time, Tom Steyer, the time, Tom Steyer. So I want to thank you guys for having me here tonight. Um, I am from San Francisco, California. And I know that Californians can be a little self-absorbed. And I like to feel that I'm a true Californian in that case. So I'm going to talk a little bit about California. And then I'm going to talk about what we can do together. I want to give you a sense of where we are as a state, and hopefully I can do it without being too self-absorbed and too self-congratulatory, but those are pitfalls that Californians fall into from time to time. It is a pleasure to be here tonight with the men and women who work tirelessly to keep the lights on for families and the stream of electrons moving for businesses. The ISO powers our homes, our communities, and our economy, and we all benefit greatly from your technical expertise, your administrative know-how, and your forward-thinking leadership. Your big mission, lead the way to tomorrow's energy network. That is a huge undertaking. But nowhere in the world are we closer to tomorrow's energy network than we think we are here in California. We want to show that we can provide prosperity at the same time that we move to clean energy and make the two go hand in hand. In the United States, oil companies and their allies have been trying to reduce the debate on climate action to a false framework of jobs versus the environment. They are pushing hard to maintain the status quo. They want to play partisan politics with our planet. But we should know that pollution and climate are not partisan issues. They're human, health, and economic issues, and they're urgent. 2015 was the hottest year since modern record keeping began, and 2016 has a 99% chance of being even hotter. This July was the hottest month ever recorded in human history. The Arctic was off the charts warm this winter with New Year's temperature at the North Pole spiking approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit above average. Arctic winter and summer sea ice set record lows. For us Californians, our historic drought has contributed to almost 70 million trees dying in our state, with another 60 million on the brink. 2015 was our worst wildlife season on record, and 2016 is looking just as grim. Approximately 4,900 fires have already burned 400,017 acres in California this year. So we have everything to gain by taking action. Cleaner air and water, fewer kids with asthma, and more jobs. And we have everything to lose if we put our heads in the sand. I deeply believe that climate change is a human issue. It ties directly to how we live our lives, how we care for our kids, and the kind of world we want to leave for the next generation. 
in California and around the country, 2016 has been a testimony to the fact that there is a dramatic gap between the few and the many. Addressing climate change and transitioning to a clean energy economy will help close that gap, both by mitigating the negative effects on health and communities, and by ensuring that we create good paying clean energy jobs that will support generations to come. These are issues of justice and fairness. Just speaking as a Californian, more than 70% of our citizens live in counties affected by unhealthy air, including more than 3.3 million adults and kids with asthma, almost 10% of our population. In the Central Valley, life expectancy can be 20 years lower in some low-income neighborhoods compared to wealthier communities absolutely right next door. And our world-famous drought is affecting us all and costing us jobs. These impacts, especially in our most vulnerable communities, bring climate change home in a very real, very local, and very human way. And we're trying to do something about it. I am a proud Californian, and we are trying to address this crisis. We are trying to build a coalition that includes a diverse coalition of California businesses, labor, and community groups to develop a progressive policy framework. California is growing our economy and creating jobs while trying to transition to clean energy. Our landmark climate and clean energy laws have created a framework that allows our businesses to do what they do best, innovate, create jobs, and reduce carbon pollution. Many California companies are implementing clean energy on a global scale. Google has pledged to fund over $2 billion in renewable energy projects. Apple has an $850 million solar plant with 100% US operations and 100% of data centers running on renewable energy. And Kaiser Permanente has pledged to go carbon negative by 2025. More than 500,000 of us Californians work in advanced energy jobs, including more than 75,000 solar workers in our state at the end of last year more jobs than our five largest utility companies combined. Last fall, Governor Brown signed historical legislation to electrify our transportation system, boost our use of renewable electricity to 50% of the mix by 2030, and double the rate of energy efficiency in our buildings. Two weeks ago, legislators in Sacramento voted to extend our historic climate change law to 2030, setting a target to lower our greenhouse gas emissions to 40% below 1990 levels by then. This has actually been a very tough thing to accomplish. Fossil fuel companies spend millions of dollars every year to pressure our state government to keep the status quo. We spent months telling the other side of the story this year. We told lawmakers about the increasingly urgent need to address pollution and climate change before it's too late. We told them about the clean energy economy, creating jobs and opportunity. And we made sure that every lawmaker in Sacramento knew where Californians stood, including the 20,000 Californians who signed a petition demanding our leaders take action. They listened. Governor Brown and our legislative leaders truly served the public interest, and I believe it was a win for every person who breathes air or drinks water in the Golden State. It was an important victory. It's gonna be signed into law tomorrow in Los Angeles. But we know we face many battles in the years to come. Electrifying our transportation system re represents an enormous opportunity for Cal, Osa, Cal Iso to not only help reduce California's pollution and oil consumption, but to enable us to meet those renewable energy requirements. We'll need the right infrastructure and the right smart market rules to encourage owners to charge their vehicles when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing. And that's only the beginning. Everyone in this room has an opportunity and a responsibility to be a model for the rest of the country and the world. We need to export a clean energy success, not just to the West Coast, not just to the Western interconnection, but to the rest of the United States and the world. 
It's clear that exporting that success will be much easier and cheaper if the Western interconnect is much more interconnected. We need more robust transmission that connects clean energy resources to load centers. We need market rules that efficiently dispatch those resources from large wind farms and solar arrays to distributed rooftop panels and electric school buses that connect to the grid when they aren't shuttling kids to school. To accomplish all this, the idea to establish an independent system operator encompassing multiple states and reducing the inefficiencies inherent with 38 separate balancing authorities would make a lot of sense. Better efficiency is always a good thing, right? The short answer would seem to be yes, but that implies that our accounting system is perfect, which we know it's not. The longer answer requires that we answer some key questions, starting with, will the proposed changes in the structure of Cal ISO, in the structure of all the ISOs from the participating states, increase or decrease carbon pollution? Given Pacific Corp's coal-heavy resource mix and long schedule for replacing their coal plants with clean energy, their proposal to join what is now CalISO makes answering this question very relevant. A lot of modeling has already been conducted to try to answer how this proposed merger would impact our carbon pollution. But more will need to be done before we have an answer we can accept with perfect confidence. So far, the models indicate that an expanded ISO will very likely reduce the direct cost of producing electricity, but will also risk some near-term pollution increases. But when it comes to meeting our clean energy goals, we need to have more than indications, we need more than confidence, we need to be sure that we won't be trapped in a system that's gone wrong. We need to be sure that California can continue to enforce its clean energy laws. Other states are gonna have their own concerns that they need to have confidence in too. But we need to know that the operation of the ISO will not only reduce costs, but also make it possible to export clean energy leadership, and at the very least, not import more carbon pollution. We in California, I mean, we are self-absorbed. We think we have a great energy framework right here in, at home. We're proud of it and we want to protect it. We think it's served us very well. And one of the great things about deals is, if they don't make sense, you don't have to make them. You can hold out for something better. From a high level perspective, making our grid more interconnected is a very smart thing to do. But in this case, God is in the details. So that means, in doing it, we have to make sure we get it right. To make the market work the way we want, we need the right rules, and we need a regulator that will protect our interests. Rules that are fair, that make sense, and that help make tomorrow's energy network as clean as it needs to be. I know that many of the people in this room are hard at work to achieve these goals, and I believe you can reach a smart solution that addresses the concerns of everyone involved. I am pulling for you. California citizens are pulling for you. And I'll do what I can to help because I know that not doing this has very real costs for California too. I trust you guys. You keep the lights on in our communities and with the right grid solution, you're gonna play a huge role in helping the West light the way on clean energy for our neighbors in the region and around the world. Thank you very much.